G'day, mate. Welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, Jedi. So this week, um, well, today I want to have a look at the Oxygen Not Included Assistant. It's another out-of-game uh, external resource. We actually did the Oxygen Not Included database a couple of days ago, uh, which is another really, really good resource. Today, I want to cover the Oxygen Not Included Assistant. Now, the main thing I actually use on this particular site is the Rocket Calculator and the Food Calculator um, because they're just incredibly powerful and incredibly useful tools. We're going to look at the rocket calculator first. And the main reason I do this is, or I use this, is it just simplifies the whole rocket system. Um, the rockets are not exactly easy to work with. They do give you all the raw maths. And if you want to pull out a pen and a paper and do a whole bunch of maths, you can work out this, you know, how much fuel you need in a rocket to get to a certain uh, point and anything like that. All pen and paper and a little bit of time and effort. Or you could come to this particular page and say, hey, I have a steam rocket. It's my very first rocket. I want to get off the ground. I want to get some space research. I need research or sightseeing modules. We want the research, obviously. I don't want to put in a solid fuel booster if I don't have to. I do need a command module. So this is already set up for you. And we're going to the very first ring of asteroids being 10,000 kilometers. Um, I want to put in one, two. We can see down here this how, how much steam we need to load in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turns out nine uh, sightseeing modules is as far as you can go with one steam rocket uh, at 875 kilograms worth of steam. I think I launched my first one with seven, so this is the amount I need. But you can work out exactly how much steam you need to load into your rocket to get it off the ground and get it to your first destination. If you want to have more, you know, we decide to add a solid fuel booster. We can now take that number up to, that's as tall as I can make a rocket, it turns out. Uh, nope, you can only have 10 sightseeing modules. Yeah. Uh, I think there is still a limit. I know it was there in the past. Um, maybe it's been changed, but yes, if I wanted to go to 20,000, uh, I can't get there with 10 research modules. If I turn this down slightly, there we go. There we go. I can make six research modules on a steam rocket with a solid fuel booster, one command capsule. I need 886 kilograms worth of steam. Um, this is actually how I've set up my current oxygen included doomsday, uh, doomsday cult. Uh, series. I actually came on to the Oxygen Included, uh, Oxygen Included Assistant, and I wanted to have a cargo bay, and I wanted to launch out to the first asteroids back and forth, just, just short loops out and back, grab as many resources as I could, and bring them back. And I actually found out I could launch my steam rocket with a solid fuel booster and a cargo bay, not a problem. But I added a second cargo bay, it was actually too heavy to get off the ground, so I couldn't do that. But I did find I could add two research modules without any problem. So I figured for the cost of, you know, 300 kilos worth of steam, uh, I was going to grab the two researching modules. And even though I'm going to a destination I've already been to before, I still got back a little bit of science every single time these, these did a trip. Um, it's actually given me enough science without visiting anything more than the first two asteroids to get all of all the science tree done except for the the very very last one which i believe is the gas container and the biological uh the biological containment module i think that's the last research i haven't picked up um but everything else is is completed and done with just steam rockets i haven't even built myself a petroleum rocket and like i said the best thing about this database is if we go to petroleum we can now see that this current setup going to this distance with a solid fuel booster would only need 43 and 43 kilograms if i change it over to oxalite because i haven't actually got liquid oxygen it's 60 60 kilograms but if i fully loaded the rocket I could get out to 51,000 kilometers without a problem. I could even peak out at 54, but I couldn't actually quite make it to 60. And that's just this current rocket setup. So if we change this to 50,000, it's now gonna, be, gonna give me my new fuel amounts required for 50,000 kilometers uh, using oxalite. Uh, liquid oxygen is way more efficient. And as you can see, a quick change of the numbers means 
that rocket can actually get all the way out to 90,000 kilometers now. It's just going to make there. It's going to need three fuel tanks, one oxidizer tank, uh, two research modules, a cargo bay, and a booster. Does removing the booster. Oh, look, removing the booster actually makes it more powerful. I can now get out to 10,000 kilometers. So, you know, small changes like that, you can you can drastically increase the efficiency of your rocket. Um, obviously, you can see by the time you got petroleum, Solid fuel boosters are actually, they they cost you more in weight than they actually get you benefit in uh, launch capacity. Anyway, that is the rocket calculator. The geyser calculator is a different way of looking at um, a different way of looking at your geysers. Um, they actually give you this, this really nice graph. So we've got a cool steam vent with an eruption cycle of 168 seconds every 299 section, uh, seconds. It has a eruption output of whatever it happens to be, um, grams per second of steam, the activity cycle of, of, and we have, we want to get the temperature of the steam down to 97 degrees Celsius. So it tells us that we need 20 wheeze warps or uh, to, to cool this 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 steam down. So with 20 weeds watts, we could cool it fine. Uh, we could do it with 11 per eruption cycle uh, or eight per activity cycle. So if we want to just cool it over the whole, what is it, uh, 94 cycles, we'd only need eight of them. If we want to cool it during just the eruption cycle, so this, this number here, uh, we need 11 of them. And whilst it's currently erupting, that second whilst it's erupting, it actually puts out this many duplicate thermal units worth of heat, and we'd need 20 wheeze watts to keep it cool. So it's just, well, it would need this amount of cooling or 20 wheeze watts. So it's it's a wonderful way of you know visualizing this is when it's erupting, this is its eruption cycle, this is its dormancy cycle, and just giving you some 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 maths to see how you can actually cool down your um your different or cool down or heat up um like you know if you want a a, a volcano that you want to cool down from 1700 down to 97 you need 587 wheeze watts um and you get 91 tons of uh, igneous rock per 94, uh, 95 cycles. So again, like, and actually igneous rock only has to come down to 1400, 1400 degrees. So that's a lot more, a lot less wheeze warts. But yeah, same story. It gives, gives you a lot of details about your different, uh, your different um, geysers and how much cooling you need to apply to keep them running. So a leaky, leaky oil fisher. Leaky oil fisher is one people come across a lot. Um, it pumps out oil at 320 odd degrees. Your steam, uh, your steel uh, liquid pumps only go up to 275 degrees. So normally you have to add some sort of cooling. And this is the amount of cooling that you'd, you would require to cool the oil down from this temperature to this temperature to then actually pump it through your pump um, using wheeze warts. There are other methods for cooling, and um, some of them can be really good. Some of them can be really bad. Food calculator. Food calculator is something I spent a lot of time on. Um, well, I spent time on um, as my series progress, as I try and work out what food I'm going to feed my duplicates. So the current, my current series, again, I'm going with Surf and Turf for up to about 50 dupes now, believe it or not. Um, so we would need 8.33 Surf and Turfs per cycle, which is 8.3 barbecue with 8.3 cooked fish, which is 8.3 fish and 16.67 meat. And if I'm using Chavols, so if I'm using Chavols, it's only 1.67 Chavols I have to murderize uh, per cycle. I'm actually still cooking with hatches. So as we can see, it's actually 8.33 hatches because a hatch provides two meat, whereas a Chavol provides 10 meat. So a little bit difference in the numbers, but this will give you like details on your duplicates and that sort of stuff. And you might say, hey, look, I've actually have unfortunately brought in seven dupes that happen, happen to have bottomless stomach. And again, it will quickly redo the mass for you so you can work out exactly what you have to do. Um, exactly how, how many critters that you need to be able to murderize per cycle to, to keep your duplicates uh, running. At the same time, if we go to... Uh, yeah, let's go with Frostbun. So Frostbun 
if we have dupes harvesting them, we need 151 sleep wheat per cycle. Um, if they're wild, so we're not actually going to... We're going to have them wild so we don't have to put in the water and the water and the, and the dirt. So they're actually a wild... They only grow at 25% of the rate, so we actually need 605 sleep wheat now compared to the earlier number of just 151. And if we're going to fertilize them, that'll bring the numbers down once again. So you can actually start working out some really interesting numbers. Like, you know, 151, if you're going to fertilize them and put them in greenhouses, you now only need 75. But you do need to come up with like 400 kilos worth of fertilizer every single cycle, which is so much polluted water, so much dirt, and so much phosphorite. So, you know, change up your numbers slightly. You can have wild plants that you fertilize as well, um, which can drastically change your numbers. On top of that, you can actually stop the duplicates harvesting it. So if you want to go for wild plants that dupes didn't harvest, because after things have been ripe for two cycles, the uh, food that's on the plants automatically falls off on the ground. You have auto sweepers pick it up, or just the duplicates come pick them up. Um, I'd actually need 638 sleep wheat plants to feed my 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 50 duplicates on Frostbun for life. So something to consider if I want to do this wild. Um, realistically, I'd probably do it wild on fertilizer, but even then, that is a lot of fertilizer every single cycle um it's gonna cost me 900 kilos of dirt compared to if i'd done it um if i did it with non-wild and dupes were harvesting um that's significantly less dirt so uh well that's even less dirt yeah fertilizing wild plants is not exactly cost effective. Um, not unless you happen to be swimming, swimming in resources. Uh, finally, we have the cooling calculator. Now, the cooling calculator is... It's, it's, it's very, very powerful. Okay? It's very, very powerful. I am going to... It's one of those ones that you're much better off to play with the stats yourself. Um, but if I want to cool... Water from 97.35, so pretty much like the point where it liquefies into steam, down to 5 degrees Celsius to feed to something like sleet wheat. Um, I'd need 16.1 uh, Weesworts, 2.4 thermonullifiers. Yes, thermonullifiers are really not that powerful. Um, I would need to have... I don't know why it says polluted water. Oh... Okay, um, that's an interesting setup with your boiling off polluted water to space to cool the aqua tuna. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and like 48.2 ice machines. Yes, the ice machines are that pointless. Um, there are different settings in here um, where you can, you know, change... Um, your different settings, like, you know, if I didn't want to photo, if I want to have wild, um, Weasworts rather than, um, domesticated ones, I guess it blows out the numbers significantly. Um, yeah, I'm not going to play with any of those settings right now, but yes, it's, it's a very, very powerful, um, very, very powerful calculator as well. On top of that, we have the oxygen included database database which is very very similar to the, the the one i showed off last uh video which there are always links down at the bottom again all sorts of different stats in here um uh, you know from the 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 artifacts the elements you know what crashed ice is diamond um their decor value their overheat modifier all that sort of stuff and finally we've got a couple of guides i think these are mostly out of date um, but yeah, this is the Oxygenaut Included Assistant. I highly recommend it for the Rocket Calculator and the Geyser Calculator. They are absolute pieces of works of art. I have used this the Rocket calculator, calculator basically since it was first released on the internet. And I've been using it ever since. It just makes the whole rocketry system so much easier to work out. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, down at the bottom, there is a uh, playlist to both this uh, whole Oxygen Included um, like tips, ticks, uh, tips, tricks, and tutorial series, along with the also, also will be a link to my current series, um, the Doomsday Cult, where I'm using duplicates as like a 
a somewhat expendable renewable resource. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.